Okay, some of you guys wanted to know the glow I did in my uh my last Demon Slayer edit. I forgot what I called it. But yeah, some of you wanted to know the glow I used for that, so yeah, I'm gonna show you duplicate your layer. Then you can do this with two-way color key as well, but linear color key is more accurate. So pick a color. I'm gonna go with the, the pink. So just follow what I'm doing. Also, add scan lines, can't spell, scan lines to it, it gives this pretty cool effect. How I do my transitions, I'll actually put in the description all the tutorials I watched on how to actually use camera. So you have your clip, turn on motion blur, add motion tile, and turn on 3D. Then you want to add your camera right above your clip. Now these are my camera settings, but it doesn't matter where your camera settings are. If you're advanced enough and you know what you're doing, you can mess with it, but you don't have to, and I don't. But those are my camera settings. What you wanna do, make three, and all layers, turn on 3D, and then link the camera to them. And then, yeah, link that to that, and then this to that, so on and so forth. Then, um, as you can see, this is going down to up and then back down. So the way camera works, it's pretty weird. So there's two um, two ways you could use uh, camera transitions. If you want your character, if you want the camera, not the character. So this is the character. This is the camera right here. If you want the camera, for example, to go to the right. Your character has to go to the left. It's not like using normal no layers where if you want your camera to go to the right, your character also has to go to the right. It's a pretty weird so I want my camera to go to the right. And see this is my camera right here. You see my character is going to the left. So yeah, you wanna follow this if you want your camera to go to a certain direction. And then the same thing applies when you're going, if you want a down position or up position, for my camera to go down, my character has to go up and vice versa. You could do that and that's how I do it. But the, you could also just use the traditional way of, I want my character to go up so I'm gonna just let it go up and you don't really have to follow what the, um, what I just did the, the, the first rule. But I, I suggest using the first rule because it, it looks cleaner and this is what I used here. So, right here you can see scale 40 to 100. And then position, you can see it's at the bottom corner. So this is where my camera is, at the bottom corner. Going back up, 
and then back down back to the right here you know these are my graphs right there and I actually used um, this one so you can copy those values right there it's pretty tight but I do like keeping a tight pause so for the, that's the first one so main, the first uh, null you want to get your main transition out the way the second one is just for smoothness so this is for a zoom in to out so for zoom ins to out you want to keyframe the scale at 90 and then put the keyframe to 100 but you want to set the keyframe at 100 for like way back so not here you want to put it like way way back and then for the third one it's for your transition out so i just use position and you can see keyframe there and yeah the same rule applies where you know the camera goes down and your character goes up and it went back to the original uh, starting point where we started and the reason why i keep it one frame away so like it fully reaches the final point is because of your one frame is not i mainly use as you can see here i, I just use motion blur I mean not motion blur, directional blur. But if you were using other one framers, having it this way would make it very easy to like actually have your one framers look good. Like if I did all the way down like this, it doesn't really look good. But like that I can I can work with that so yeah that's why I do it that way and I know some other editors like Sharpie and odd uh all window he does it like that too and these are my graphs for the transition out and this is this one so you can copy the coordinates to that but yeah that's how the transition looks like and keeping it that way actually looks pretty smooth but you can also make it a lot smoother by adding shakes and stuff so for shakes you want to keep the same premise as having well, with shakes you want to have a rule to make it like not high frequency and you know just like really smooth if i reset this it shakes a lot it shakes like crazy but i kept like i kept the uh amplitude the same you can also watch um, Nest's transition video. Um, he goes more in depth on the shakes, on the smooth shakes than I do, but I mainly got this from him. He actually made me realize that I was doing it the wrong way. So you can put this at 6 point, uh, 0 0.65 or lower. You can also put that lower if you don't like how it looks. You also want to mess with the Y. You don't want to mess with the Z or the tilt. You can just leave it alone. But the Y and the X, because if you just left that alone, so like if I reset this, you can see here that like the corners jut out a lot more and it doesn't really look as nice. Yeah, you can see, like, I can, I can, I can see the motion blur. I mean, motion tile right there. So, let's keep it at 30 or 45, and the same thing applies for that. But I think that's, yeah, that just stayed the same. So that's how you get the smooth uh, shake to make it like constantly moving. And then I don't know if anybody else does this. But you, now that you have your camera, just go over here, auto transform, um, add, a, add an expression, type in wiggle, open bracket, one, comma, one. Uh, okay, you can put one, or two, or three, that just basically increases the shake, but keep it at one point, I mean, one, comma, one, to make it as smooth as possible. 
and then finally use um uni camera shake this is a really really good um shake if you want to get like this kind of transition these types of movements like and this even surprised me like look how fucking smooth that is god damn god damn god damn but yeah if you kept it uh, duplicate that if you kept it like default if you kept this default you can see like crazy motion tile so and that's because your footage is scaled out if you scale it back into a hundred you can still see it now you could lower the um the x and the y values but you would be sacrificing movement and a uh, smoothness for you know hiding the motion tile but what you can do i found the sweet spot is 108 and then you can put this to 90 if you can still see the um the motion tile you, you would mainly see the motion tile on the y not really from the x so you can leave the x but if you do see it from the x you know just tweak the settings this you can mess with these two are basically the same thing this is basically frequency and obviously that's frequency they're basically the same thing i don't mess with this but i do mess with that like, put it at two or three just keep it the same and then yeah that's that's um how i get my smooth smoother shakes smooth as uh, movement and i actually figured it figured this out in uh this edit in particular see like right here i can see the motion tile that i didn't spot before now i could either turn this down see so now i can see it or put a 110 put that to 100 and that to 100 just do that yeah yeah that looks pretty cool Yeah, that looks pretty smooth so yeah that's how you do a well mainly this is how i do my camera movement camera transitions and stuff like that fellas show this video to your girl i gotta see i'm testing something will she date me ah will she date me ah i don't want to know you can keep her. i'm just saying will she date me ah I'm just playing with you. Don't show her. She might fuck around and leave you. Ah, let me stop. Will she date me? Ah.